Welcome back to Bourbon Barrel Talk. I'm your host, Scott Mint, and today I'm sitting down with Mr. DJ Magic Matt. What's up, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? Fine. How are you? Oh, living the dream, living the dream. Please share. So, uh, hey, uh, well, I didn't say it wasn't a nightmare. I just said it was a dream. Fair. I'll give you that. <laughs> So, hey, we are uh, sitting down today, and we're going to go over, um, I, I guess it's one of the newest, hottest single barrel items that are out on the market here, in the in the Louisville marketplace, it, at least. It's something different, right? We, yeah. it, we all see the same shit release day in, day out. It's new. It's different. These guys have never done a single barrel program until recently. Yep. So what we what Matt is referring to is Angel's Envy. We have three different kinds. Give me a drum roll or anything. But God, rookie. Angel's Envy in what finished in what? Port wine casks. Port wine casks. Port wine casks. So anybody that knows me knows that I'm not a big fan of any port finished. Sherry, I don't mind port. I do not care for. Are you a fan of port in general? Like, no. Have you had? Yeah, port it's too sweet. Wine. Okay. Have you had good port wine? Maybe not. I mean, I live in Indiana, so I mean, <laughs> the likelihood that I got good port wine is probably not very fucking good. You and your dog drink out of the same bowl too, so I'm really not surprised. Right. You know, I mean, I, Starlight has a couple of decent ports; they're not bad. I just, I, I, it, port's just not my thing. I don't know. It, it's people an after t- dinner cordial. They're like, oh, it's a that's, that's what everybody says. It's like, oh, it's a dessert wine, and I'm like, well, they make perfectly good blackberry and strawberry and all that stuff, and it's perfectly sweet too. But it's not as strong as port, and maybe that's what I don't like about it. And you hold your purse up high when you talked about that. That's fine. I can. Fine. I, I don't. I, I carry a wristlet anyway. <laughs> with a with a gold chain. That's right. What is it, Tory Birch? Uh, Tory Birch. Wow, wristlet. look at you. Hey, man, I'm fancy. It's like you bought your wife something for Valentine's I need, I need to go buy her something. I'm still not done we, that We yet. go to the outlet mall. We're done here. <laughs> for real. Shit, I'm, I'm like, I've been a lousy husband the last uh, six months. I ain't going to lie. Like, I literally, like, bought her something online for Christmas. And it, it wasn't like it was a bad gift. It was something that she wanted, but there was not a whole lot of surprise to it, you know? Well, it's pretty hard to surprise anybody nowadays because everything's online. And let's be honest, if the Amazon truck drives by my house and doesn't drop off a present... I think that somebody stole it and is running away with it. <laughs> I guess that's probably true. So anyway, so we have three different selections here of the port wine finished barrel, um, Angel's Envy. We have uh, the Cox's Evergreen pick. We have the Total Wine pick. And we have the K. Rogers, as I like to call it, but most people call it Kroger. So Now, to my knowledge, I think these were the first three that were released in Kentucky. Really? I think so. I mean, Evergreen was the first. Total Wine was the second. And I don't know... If Kroger was the third, it depends if uh, Costco did it before or the distillery did it before. I really don't know, but it's it's up top five. We'll give it top five. Gotcha. So before we dive into the actual bottles and, and and the pour and how they taste and all that type of stuff, I do have to say one of my favorite bottles on the entire market is the Angel Envy bottle. I just like the way it looks. It's a beautiful bottle. It does not travel very well. I will give it that much. I've had some bad experiences traveling with the Angel's Envy bottles. Breakage or like uh, spillage or both. Both actually. Both. Okay. Now, now one of them was my own fault. I left it in the car too long. It was a tad bit toasty out there. Oh, yeah, one of those the, heated bottles. The, the cork popped straight off and the bottle fell right over. Yep, that's not good. Nope, my car had a wonderful aroma for the next couple of years, and then I decided I would get a DUI if pulled over in the summertime. <laughs> All I had to do was stick their head in and be like, hey, what, what's this? What's that smell, boy? You've yeah. been drinking. It smells like Angel's Envy Rye. And I was like, I know, it's a new air freshener. And they give you the flashlight to the eyeballs. Yeah. Shit, dude, that's bright. All right, get out of the car. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Um, prom, my wife's senior year. Um, we decided we were going to take a ride in uh, my mom and dad's car and we decided we were going to drive around Cherokee Park. Mm-hmm. And I, at that time, I didn't know that much about Cherokee Park. So we get driving around things and all of a sudden berries and cherries are in my back. So dude pulls me over. I don't even know. Have, I have no idea where I am. I turned a wrong turn. I'm in some fucked up part of, you know, Cherokee at this point. And dude comes in flashing the, the high beams right in my eyeballs. And I'm just like. Ah, oh, dude. What do you, you been drinking? And I'm like, dude, I'm a soft, I'm like a sophomore or junior in high school at this time. I'm like, no, I haven't been drinking. <laughs> I wish. I wish, exactly. You want to buy me some booze? <laughs> so it, it was not a good experience, but uh, I, I did not go back there for like another year no. or so. I got a little scared so off. That was, that was my first bad experience with uh, Angels. I mean, the second one is I, so it was really difficult to get it. It was really difficult to get it out in California and Arizona. So I flew out to Arizona or to California. And I wrapped it real tight in my bag. 
and I wanted to take it as like a, a gift, right? You know, something good. Angel's Envy Rise. This is a solid drinker. This was a couple of years ago. Again, I open the bag. This wonderful aroma comes out of it. Every piece of clothing I had in there <laughs> was soaked. So what do you attribute that to? Do you think it's the glasses the a little necks, thin? The neck snapped on it. I don't know if we were just careless with it or what, but I guess I didn't wrap it tight. But yeah. I mean, I was covered in a couple of towels, so that was where most of it, but like there's glass everywhere. Like it's just destroyed. You like, know, people on airlines do not necessarily toss. Well, the whole bottle was things shattered. Very the whole bottle was shattered, so I don't know if the air pressure got to it, oh, but I would, assume that, I would assume the cork would pop off before the bottle shatters. Like it's not on there super tight. Uh, fair enough. Paper. I don't know. Did did they have uh, plastic s- seals or anything on them at that time? No, they still don't. Gotcha. Well, good deal. So trying um, this first one here, we're going to go to uh, the Cox's Evergreen one. We'll try it, and then we'll move to uh, Total Wine, then the K. Rogers, and we'll discuss what we think, taste, smell, all that good stuff. So nose on this one up front is actually really good. I actually really appreciate which, that. Did you try the far right one? I mean, the Cox's Evergreen one. Damn. <laughs> Note to self, these were blind before. They were blind. So um, we tried them. Matt, Matt wouldn't let me go live on a blind. But I actually did nail all three of them. If, if You did. I, I nailed all of them. You did. And it's basically because I just, I I, I trust the palate of Cox's. I mean, those those guys, Mike and the fellows that are on that team that picks their, their single barrel product, I think they just do a really good job. So the nose on this one is actually really fragrant. It's got a really good, lots of, you know, vanilla, um, I'm getting like some, I can't, I can't put the fruit on this one though. It's got a fruit, you know, but I can't really grab it. The, the Knopf may have this one though. What do you, what do you get? I just really freaking enjoy this bag. So obviously the nose is really vibrant. You have some of those darker fruits there. They really come out like your dark like cherries, a plum, like cherry. a dark cherry, a plum, something like that really comes out on the nose. But when you drink it, man, that port finish is right up front and I love it. And it, I think this has got to be a high rye mash bill. I don't, you said you didn't know the mash bill because, that, it, I mean, I it's got know. the spice that a rye would have. That, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. I can't take you anywhere. <laughs> no. You're like, hey, let's do an episode on these angel rare single barrels. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's do that. And I'm like, what do you know about them? Nothing. I, I just think, bought them. I, I bought them. them. <laughs> That's what we do. We buy them. We try them. We talk about them. It's very simple. <laughs> can't take you anywhere. So, yes, I, I actually... So, <laughs> really do enjoy this one. Um, the nose is fantastic, though. I mean, like, this is... I, I'd make this into a candle all day long. What? To freeze it in the wintertime and skate on it and melt it in the springtime and drink it. <laughs> wow, Olaf. <laughs> and you turn into a puddle. <laughs> that was a beer fest quote. So That was a beer fest quote. Yeah, this is... I, I, you know, it's been a... I bet I've only seen beer fest once ever in my life. And it's been like probably I don't know when did it come out. So that's how long it's been since I've seen it. It's fine. It's been a while. I guess it came out like around the same time that like all those Kevin Smith movies came out, like Clerks and Chasing Amy and Jay and Silent Bob, all that kind of stuff. At least the all the well, original. Jay sets. and Silent Bob were in this movie. Were they really? Yeah. Because then it led to the trailer of like Pot Fest coming soon, and oh, then that movie that's never right. happened. Yeah. That's funny. I forgot all about that. <laughs> Yeah, see, everyone forgot about it. Yeah, listen, it wasn't a very good movie, so I'm, I am impressed by your by your knowledge of memory it's by thinking movie. about that. That's a water. That's... Yeah, I was about to say, throw that water over over here. Let me get a little taste of the, with the water in it. <laughs> yeah, throw the whole glass on me. That's good. Um, gang, Cooperstown, New York. Hey, that's where the Baseball Hall of Fame is, right? Cooperstown? Am I wrong? No, I'm you're right. right. You're right. Jeez, man, I need a little bit of interaction here. I, mean, no, I just wanted use, to see you sweat you, for a minute. Let me just do the whole fucking podcast by myself. Hi, this is Scott Minna. <laughs> Hi, Scott. How's it going, Scott? It's great, Scott. Thanks for asking. I mean, it would be more entertaining. I mean, I'm the funniest guy here. <laughs> At least I'm a legend in my own mind. Yes, you are. <laughs> Can we mute his mic? No, absolutely. Pretty should. All right, a little water. I think it loses something. The whole um, That whole port finish goes away. It does. And you get a lot more spice with it. That's interesting. Yep. Yeah. Isn't it weird how don't some things lose? Yeah, don't add water to the Cox's Evergreen one. <laughs> don't, do not. It's fantastic without it. <laughs> it. It's so weird when that happens, though. Like, you drink something, and you're like, oh, that's really good. And then you're like, let's just try it with water. Because you, you want to you wanted be able to tell people, hey, what what's the difference between a little bit of water, no water, ice, no ice, that type of thing. And some things just lose it whenever you add water to it. And this is one of them. Do not water it down. All right. Do not. Total Wine is next. Also, really good nose. This one's really heavy, like sweet sugar notes. 
Like I'm getting like a lot of like caramel, creme brulee type smell. Almost yes. like brown sugar. It's got a good nose. All right, go back into the taste. So it's got a really good mouthfeel. Um, it's also still really sweet, though. Still sweet up front. I like it. So on the second one, it's it's definitely different with the water, but I don't think it's really lost anything. Like to me, this one's about the same with a little bit of water as the as I tried it beforehand. But I'll let you give it a little try and see what you think. I think the sugar notes are probably actually a little bit more prominent with the water added. Um, so it's a little smoother, but I'm not sure... If it's any better or any worse, we'll just put it that way. I think you lose the upfrontness of it, but I like the finish now. Yeah, the finish is definitely got a good bit finish. Better. But again, don't add water. Don't add water. Don't add water. Okay, all right. So this last one here is the Oda K Rogers pick. K Rogers. It's just no nose. It's just bourbon. It is missing the port. I don't think it's missing the port. It's physically impossible to miss the port. I don't get the port off the nose. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. And the bourbon itself is, I mean, it just, I don't know. It's just lacking something. With it. You get a little bit of port wine in your mouthfeel. Yeah. A little bit of that full heavy milk. I don't know, man. It's just, that is such a. It's an easy drinker. Yeah, but it, it, it's almost like it's a crazy weird high rye blend. I mean, and, and I don't, we don't know what the mash bill is, but I mean, if I was going to guess, I would say that's got a really, really heavy spice. So I'm thinking that it's got to be a lot of rye in this thing. So I don't know what you think. And did water make any difference? That's going to be the next question. So a little bit of water here. It actually does open the nose up a little bit. That makes it spicy. It really does. That it makes does. It makes it even spicy. spicier. Yeah. Now, how does that work? Now, maybe you can explain that to me. If you add water to something. Can I phone a friend to a chemistry major? What? Can I phone a friend to my chemistry major? I mean, I guess you can. <laughs> I mean, I figure you probably drink more bourbon than your chemistry major buddy does. Yeah, but she understands why it happens. But it makes no sense to me. If you are watering something down, how why does do it. Why spices come out? How does it bring out the spice? And especially, it's typically that rye spice. Like, you get those pepper notes and things like that. But I'm getting ready to try it and, and, and see if I agree with you. I think 100%. And see, I disagree. I think it just literally almost took it away. I still think it, I still think it was, you don't think there's any spices that come out of it? I mean, it's at the very, very tip of my tongue, but it's not like the same finish. Like before when I drank this, it had a lot more mouthfeel to it and it had a lot more heat on right. the, on the mid part of my tongue and, and, and on that finish, um, it was a lot longer finish. Adding that water almost took the finish away. The, yeah, but it had a new had a new up front mouthfeel to it. It did. It had more pop in that up front yeah, part, but that hit the tip of your tongue and kind of tingle your lips a little bit. But I don't necessarily it's consider the most that. important part anyway. Yeah. So I don't know. That, it's definitely a different pour for sure. I oh. think I would add water to this though. This one. I don't know. I wouldn't be mad if there was an ice cube in there. Yeah. And what are the proof on all these, man? Like 105 to Anywhere 109? from 106 to one, 109. Okay. Maybe almost 110. So pretty pretty standard uh, from an Angel's Envy entry barrel proof, which is nice. And now these are good because... They must have extremely low entry points. I think so. We'll get we'll get one of the Hendersons on here to, to talk about it maybe a little bit more next time. Hmm. Hopefully. But, you know, these are kind of good because, let's face it, the trend is barrel proof this barrel proof that oh i gotta have enough barrel proof stuff oh we just need it straight from the barrel like bourbon wasn't you know i'll go on my little my little pedestal for a minute but bourbon wasn't really created to always be at barrel proof i mean all the the dusty bottles that we search for the older bottles they're all 80 84 86 90 92 right those are the proofs on them so much flavor so much character made totally different and now that everything's barrel proof like bourbon drinkers weren't always introduced to stuff at barrel proof like when we started drinking right it's woodford (laughs) crown royal yeah i don't (laughs) count that but like it's woodford and makers right when you go out somewhere it's Oh, you want, I have, I have really good bourbon. I have Woodford and Makers, and that's what you're introduced to, right? And I find that weird, you know, because when you say that, like, Woodford and Old Forester are basically kind of the same thing. Not not don't, quite. Don't say that. I mean, I'm just throwing my, my humble opinion into the game. It is very humble at that. Um, but similar mash bills. Sure. Similar methods, the same distillers, like they. But, but again, which is fine, and and that's fine. But when you someone says they have Old Forester, 
and it's at a bar that's not here, right? It's their well. They have 86 well, old folk. Now, if you're not, if you're really far outside of Kentucky, people are like, Jack Daniels is our well bourbon. And then that's a whole nother discussion because a can of worms just opened up. That's right. Because is it bourbon or is it whiskey? <sighs> it's a bourbon. But, <laughs> but again, you know, same concept is anywhere outside of Kentucky, if you order bourbon and Coke, they're going to tell you, oh, yeah, like Jack Daniels is our house bourbon. Here it's Kentucky Tavern at like, you know. You get a two dollar bourbon and coke, you know it's Kentucky Tavern. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is fine. Kentucky, so. Kentucky Tavern, Kentucky Gentleman. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. a few of those. Kentuckys. Used to be the Heaven Hill. Sometimes it was Heaven Hill. I think there's one. Uh, I would not be disappointed with the six year bottle. <laughs> no, what? Yeah, I wish it was. Sometimes <laughs> you get that by mistake. Yeah, like no, the Blind Squirrel, they used to do. Oh, they use Heaven Hill as their um, house bourbon. Right. So you get a bourbon and coke, and like I got excited when I was like, "Oh, is that? Keep keep coming." No Coke. <laughs> That's what she said. And I was like, no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> wow. No, the Coke. <laughs> yeah. You naughty boy. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's it's always interesting. But I think this is a great, like, transition for people's palate to go from your normal everyday shelfers to evolving your palate, right? You have to go to a transition phase. You can't just go straight into barrel proof because all of a sudden you're drinking 86 old foe, 90 Weller, right? You think you're great. You have a bottle of Weller special reserve and 90 proof. It's awesome. But then you go straight into barrel proof, right? You have a four roses barrel proof. Your friend of yours has an old foe barrel proof and you freaking light your mouth on fire and send your taste buds for the next five days. Yeah. Cause you're not used to it, but this right here at a, at a solid transitional proof at 106 to 110, that's a good way to kind of proof yourself up to actually appreciating some of the flavor profiles of those higher proofs, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. I 100% agree with what you're saying. I just, I, I guess I look at the, yes, if you're trying to sophisticate your palate, this would probably be a good way to do that. If you're going from bourbon to bourbon though, I don't know that I would add a, a port finish in, in the middle there. No, no, no. It's not, it's not for that, but it's simply for the fact of going into a higher gravity and a higher You have alcohol. to work your way up to it no, because you, it, everyone wants barrel proof. Everyone thinks they need barrel proof, but if you ask the amount of people who drink half the barrel proofs they buy, they don't. They yeah. just don't. There's so many... There's so many museums at everyone's houses and everyone's basements because... Yeah, and when you go from 90 to 120, it's a big shock. Yeah, but this shit was made to appreciate, right? You have to appreciate what they made. They didn't They didn't bottle it just so you'd be like, oh, I'll put iced tea in here and put a cool label on it and they'll never know the difference. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I, I do like iced tea. <laughs> I think there was one maker's bottle where they didn't fill it or they just put water in it because it was just a decanter. Really? I think they didn't fill it. <laughs> That's funny. It was still like sixty or seventy bucks. That's that that now that is funny. <clears throat> so between these three, I feel like we we both agree that we're pretty the, unanimous. The Coxes One, is the best. Two, three Coxes. <laughs> what? Oh my god! You said the same thing. Yeah, and then uh, Total Wine was a a a, a second, yeah. and then Kroger was probably the, the least of our favorite in that in that realm. Yeah, now I do have a Costco one and the distillery one coming and they're just not here yet but trying five would be a sleep on the couch afterwards yeah especially with the pours you put in here man happens I'm, sometimes i'm gonna go back to this cox's it's one a friendly pour it's a friendly household we I, share i i feel sad though that i've already added water to it now though so i can't really get back that that full i mean there is cut. plenty left in the bottle mm. but this is a tasty pour it for sure is mm. This is a tasty beverage. <laughs> Some Samuel L. Jackson. Was that? Was that? Uh, oh, that's poor, uh, Pulp, Pulp Fiction. Fiction. Yeah, I had to think about it for a second there. Oh my god, my fa my, my favorite line in that entire movie um, is when they're talking and he goes, I, I, "You're the one who shot Reggie in the face." <laughs> like that whole car scene when he's in the back. Oh my god, that that thing Hulk, that just kills me. It's just a hilarious movie. It's one of my favorites. An old cult classic. You can't go wrong with Pulp Fiction. No, you cannot. You mean to tell me he threw him out of a window for giving his woman a foot massage? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I'm a mushroom cloud land mother truck a motherfucker. <laughs> Every time I touch brain, I turn into Superfly TNT. The guns of the Navarone. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson just killed that movie. He was I mean, the greatest like, in that movie. They were well, somebody was talking, and they were uh, 
they were like, what's Samuel L. Jackson's like best movie or whatever. And like, it was not snakes on a plane. No, but it like, it, it typically goes back to, you know, Pulp Fiction or, you know, one of the others, but I just, I'm like, I just Pulp Fiction. That whole just, cast. Oh dude. It was unbelievable. You know, Bruce Willis, him, um, was it Michael Green, the guy yeah. that played uh, Marcellus Wallace? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you know, um, uh, shoot, who's Travolta? The little, Travolta. The, the, my favorite. Oh, is Uma the, Thurman's in it. Yeah, Uma Thurman. But my honestly, my favorite is the dude. Uh, he came to the rescue. Um, uh, the little um, Italian guy. Oh, the fox. Yeah, the fox. Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox. What is what is his name? I don't know. Oh man, is I mean, a, and Quentin Tarantino yeah. had a had a. Yeah, I Just wish made I could, some gourmet fucking I wish coffee. I could, I wish I could think of the fox's name now. The actor that played that role. Oh well, we could probably Google it, but it's 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 already lost now at this point. We already said we don't know. I know I'm a loser. <laughs> but yeah, that was an absolute. Brad, who was wasn't Brad? Um, is it Paul Rudd or somebody? No, I don't know. It looked like I don't even remember. No, I don't even remember the face of Brad at this point. <laughs> Look at the big brains on Brad. <laughs> Oh, Brad. Or how do I know which wallet is yours? It's the one that says bad motherfucker. <laughs> That's a classic one as well. Oh, my goodness. That is just such a funny movie. Marcellus, why you got to treat me like a bitch? <laughs> There's just a million of them. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of, motherfucker? Do they speak English in what? <laughs> what? English, motherfucker? Do, do you, you speak, speak it? it? <laughs> Oh, goodness. That is a classic movie. So anyway, back to the Angel's Envy while you're looking up who Brad is in, in Pulp Fiction. Oh, Harvey yeah. Keitel is the wolf. Harvey Keitel, yes. Harvey, I said That's who I'm Keitel. Who says Keitel? I don't know. <laughs> well, my name is Matt Jasnoff, and I, I think Harvey Keitel. It's Harvey Keitel, yes, for sure. But uh, hmm. he did, uh, what was that one movie? The Piano or something like that? That that was the movie where he caught a bunch of flack because he was the ocean girl or whatever. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Full yeah. frontal. The old Harvey Keitel. Anyway, um, three definitely unique picks from Angel's Envy. They have some flavor. Um, one to me stands out for sure, though, the Cox's one. The Total Wine's good. I, I'm kind of curious if Patrick was on the pick team on this one. Patrick seems to have a pretty good palate, so it would make sense if he was on there. Um I don't know. These are definitely good, good solid bottles. They're all gone, I'm sure. You might be able to find one on the secondary market near you. <laughs> and then uh, try to go from there. But uh, I mean, any Christopher other? Walken was the watch scene. Oh, yeah, Christopher Walken, yeah. Oh, this watch. This yeah. watch was shoved up your father's ass <laughs> for seven centuries. <laughs> Damn, that's actually a pretty good Christopher Walken, man. Look at you. Thank you. I'm practicing. I have nothing else to do. I was about to say, man. Did you, do, did you actually work at your job this week, or did you just practice <laughs> that Chris for walking? <laughs> oh, goodness. So um, if you do see them out there, I, I, I don't even know what they're going for on the secondary market. I know I saw some crazy prices like the first weekend, but I, I, I got to imagine they've probably come down quite a bit. A buck 20. Buck 20. You know, I'd probably give a buck 20 for that Cox's one. Yeah. I don't know that I'd pay I mean, a buck 20 for any of the other ones. $100. I mean, Retail, so yeah, so I don't think I would pay a hundred. I think I'd pay retail for the other ones, but I don't think I'd pay a hundred and twenty for any more than the Cox's one. I don't know about you. What do you think? I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I, am I gonna balk over twenty dollars? No. All right, I'd pay one twenty for it. I did right. pay one twenty for one of them, but well, there you go, go Matt. I needed it. I wanted it. I needed it. I wanted. That's it. what she said. I wanted it. <laughs> she never said she needed it. <laughs> Fair anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so so we we decided that's the way it runs. Um, if you want to talk to us anymore, you can always you know hit us up on Facebook. The but Instagram. if you don't want to talk to Scott, I understand. <laughs> Absolutely, a hundred percent. You can <laughs> bourbon barrel talk at gmail dot com. Um, Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook. That's the best way to get in touch with us. We really want to thank uh, anybody that's hitting the subscribe button. Also, we would like for you to share it um, and feel free to tag us in it. You know, either Scott, Matt, Josh, you know, any of us in any of your posts that you just put out there. We really just want people to share the the podcast to your friends and family. And then hopefully we'll continue to grow this uh, thing where we started off, you know, just a little over a year ago. If you loved it, Matt and Scott, if you hated it, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Matt, signing off. <laughs>